The carnival lights flickered against the dark sky, casting a colorful glow over the crowd. The air was thick with the smell of popcorn and cotton candy. I had always loved carnivals, somewhat magical escape from the everyday world. I wandered through the crowd, taking in the sights and sounds. The rides whirred and clanked, lights flashing in dizzying patterns. I decided to try my luck at one of the game booths, a row of stuffed animals dangling enticingly from the ceiling. Step right up, win a prize, the barker called, his voice booming over the noise. I handed over a few dollars and picked up the ring toss game. The rings were heavier than I expected, and I missed the target completely. The barker laughed good-naturedly and handed me another ring. Give it another go, kid, he said with a wink. I took a deep breath and tossed the ring. It clinked against the bottle, wobbling before falling to the ground. I sighed in frustration, but the barker smiled. Almost had it. Here, one more on the house, he said, pressing a final ring into my hand. I focused, determined to win this time. As I threw the ring, something caught my eye. A flash of movement in the shadows behind the booth. The ring missed again, and I turned to look, but whatever it was had vanished. Better luck next time, the barker said, his smile fading as he noticed my distraction. Yeah, thanks, I muttered, backing away from the booth. I wandered through the carnival, the sense of unease growing. The cheerful lights and sounds seemed to take on a sinister edge, the laughter too loud, the lights too bright. I shook my head, trying to dispel the feeling. It was just a carnival, after all. I found myself drawn to the Ferris wheel, its massive, illuminated wheel turning slowly against the night sky. The line was short, and I climbed into one of the brightly colored cars, the smell of grease and metal filling the air. As the wheel began to turn, I felt a sense of calm wash over me. The view from the top was breathtaking, the carnival laid out like a glowing tapestry below. As my car reached the highest point, I noticed something strange. In the distance, beyond the carnival grounds, was a dark, sprawling forest. And in the forest, just visible in the fading light, was a small, dilapidated building. It looked out of place, a stark contrast to the vibrant carnival. A sense of foreboding settled over me, and I shivered despite the warm night. The Ferris wheel continued its slow rotation, and as I descended, I saw something even more disturbing. Standing at the edge of the carnival, just where the forest began, was a figure. It was tall and thin, its features obscured by the shadows. It seemed to be watching me, its eyes glinting in the carnival lights. I looked around, but no one else seemed to notice the figure. The Ferris wheel came to a stop, and I hurried off, my heart pounding. I needed to leave, to get away from whatever was lurking at the edge of the carnival. I made my way through the crowd, the smell of sweat and fried food overwhelming. I glanced back toward the forest, but the figure was gone. I told myself it was just my imagination, the result of too much excitement and too little sleep. But the sense of unease persisted, gnawing at the edges of my mind. I decided to take one last walk through the carnival before leaving. I passed the fun house, its garish exterior flickering in the dim light. A sign above the entrance read, Enter if you dare. The letters painted in dripping, blood-red strokes. Against my better judgment, I stepped inside. The air was cool and musty, the smell of old wood and stale popcorn permeating the darkness. The mirrors warped my reflection twisting my features into grotesque shapes. I walked through the maze, my footsteps echoing in the empty space. As I turned a corner, I saw it again, the tall, thin figure standing at the end of the corridor. It was closer now, its eyes glowing in the dim light. I froze, my heart hammering in my chest. The figure began to move toward me, its steps slow and deliberate. I backed away, my mind racing. I had to get out to escape this nightmare. I turned and ran, the sound of my footsteps drowned out by the pounding of my heart. I burst out of the fun house, the cool night air a stark contrast to the stifling darkness inside. 
I looked around but the figure was nowhere to be seen. The carnival seemed normal again, the lights and sounds cheerful and inviting. I hurried to my car, the smell of exhaust and fried food fading as I left the carnival behind. As I drove away, I couldn't shake the feeling that I was being watched, that the figure was still out there, waiting. I never went back to that carnival, and every time I see a carnival, I remember that night and the horror that lurked within the shadows.